Today we are working on some scribes for Wasteland Warfare. Um, pretty nice sculpts. We've got a lot of belts and pouches to work on. Uh, laser pistol cap with goggles. And our usual awesome basing. So, we're going to start off with Gulliman Flesh. These guys wear like, open face head socks. So we only have a bit of flesh to really worry about. Oh, we're just going to get in there. And add that in. As there's so little flesh, we actually can proceed to the next stage as well without having to worry about accidentally blending our colors together. Sometimes it pulls up like that and just drag it around. Right. So next we're going to do the undergarment, which we're doing in a Flesh Terror's Red, as Blood Angels is way too bright. done first as they are the trickiest of them. Again just making sure we're dragging it everywhere. And we're going to get the side piece here. There we go. And I've actually already messed that up since apparently that's more of a smock than anything. It's even much easier to see on this side. That's fine. We will just add some base over that to fix once it's dry and we'll be good to go. And that happens. I mean, you may paint one piece and you realize it's not the piece you thought it was. And you have to go back and fix. It's not a huge deal. Now, this guy has like a little neck piece which is also part of the undersuit. So, this part we have to be a little more careful with. The balaclava piece will be black, so if I have to make a swipe, 
I'm swiping up as the black will help blend that in. Also looks like this brush has gone off a bit, so I may be replacing that soon. See, even this flesh terror red is very red, but that's the scheme we want to go with with these guys. Now, we will let that dry before moving on, because the red was pretty heavy there. Um, let's see. It is sometimes a little piece of cloth. Right here. In my reference shot shows should be red as well, so we'll just use what's left in our brush and get that. And there's a little bit of light there. We went pretty heavy, so there shouldn't be much touch-up work, if any, to do. A little under there. And there. I'm not even really applying new paint, just distributing what's there to begin with. Let's see, there's some of it pulled away. Yeah, so I'm going to have to go in and repaint primer on that panel there. Nothing too bad, though. Alright. Okay, next up is uh, the primary color on this. I'm going to go with a Skeleton Horde to begin with, uh, just a coating of it, and then see from there. And actually, now that I think about it, first thing we're going to do is a bit of Black Templars to pick out the glove and uh, boot. The boots have like leather spats on them, so I want to actually go ahead and do those first. Alright, so first our gloves here to get most of that paint off. Just taking care of that.
since the spats do sit over, we really want to go ahead and have that done first. Because again, we like to work from the lowest point to the highest. this weird little circle, almost a cutout, so I've got that, these gloves, This has to marry up to the cap and down into the neck. easily on this one. Boots on. Okay, we're just blocking this out. And as far as drying, we're just going to move right on to the brown because I'm going to do these in a darker leather as far as the spats go. So by the time I'm ready for that, I'll have to wait for everything else to dry as well. Alright. So, back to the skeleton horror. So Skeleton Horde is a lighter brown, but the nice thing is if I decide it's too light, I can always go back and just apply another coat. Uh, multiple work coats tend to work fairly well with this. 
So I'm going to start around the back. There is a... The other reason I want to go with a lighter color is... I'm saving the darker for some of the straps. And, for instance, we got this rope on the back here. So since... Definitely looks like it's going to be a little too light if I don't darken it up. I can go ahead and go pretty heavy on this and not worry about it. Down this leg. The nice thing with this model is, because it does have a lot of detail, a lot of straps, a lot of pouches, the contrast paint will really pick up on that and show that detail quite well. that's on the belt. The belt is one of those things that I'll be doing darker, but I can leave it in a light pouch over it or have any have light brown splash on it and I'm not too worried because the darker will overpower it. So that's another thing to keep in mind. If you have the ability to is to work from light to dark in areas that we'd be using both as it makes it easier to fix. And here's where we had that problem before of having red where it wasn't going to be red. And I've gone ahead and painted primer onto it and base color as I like to call it. And no problems. strapping on the backpack, we can add some dark tone to it. And then we're just going to take a quick look. Make sure we've got everywhere. Like I said, may do a second coat on that. We'll see. We'll let it dry fully before we make that decision. Which means we'll also let it dry before we apply the leather coloring. Since that will be going on top of it in, in some spots anyway. Where you can see the contrast paints just kind of flowing, showing all of that nice detail. It 
looks too heavy. Let's just suction it up. Move it to the other leg. Just here. I also need to do the hats in the same color. So I will go back and pick those up here as well. to deal with. So, for the cap, just make sure we're not covering up the glasses too much. If we happen to get the bat, the, uh, strap. It's not a big deal. As again, we'll go over that with a darker shade anyway. So we'll bring it in line with all of the leather we've been doing. So I'm just going to go ahead and paint it and darken it up later. And then the lenses, I'll do my a little bright blue. I find that looks very well for lenses. Definitely helps darkening my up. We're going to already start with this one as well. Then you can really see how it looks after it dries. And already you can see very dynamic looking colors really show off the shading here. dry since it has most of the model. See how we like that shade. And then just apply the leather and the clothing will be done. Then we have to do uh, our gray and green and yellow for the pistol. 
before moving on to the base. Now we're going to do the leather strapping and spats over the boots. If you grab the right color, though, that looks a little light. That's not a big deal. As we said before, all right, snake bite leather. Always check your colors. a nice contrast against the skeleton horde. like this and we'll just give it a little detail there. Smaller pouches don't have any strapping, so they don't have to be worried about. And then the band for the goggles. And that's pretty much it. forgot the shoulder pieces. So we've got a loop there and a strap right at the shoulder. Harder to see on the other side. So that's that one.
Build a piece there. straps and the goggles and there nice bit of detail pointed out Fill in that cut out on those spats real quick. Touch ups are something you'll probably find yourself doing a fair amount of. There we go. Alright, so. We're going to go ahead and move right on to the pistol and goggles. So, a bit of a silicon gray for our metallics. So, goggles, we're just going to hit. Pistol. Get that front port. That whole front section, pretty much. And then this trigger part. Back. Leaving the little grip there. All right, easy enough. And we want to use that gray. Give us a nice differentiation between the metallic, uh, between the black and the metallics. over. Alright. Now we have a little bit of yellow banding on the gun. Give it a bit of pop of color. And especially on the ammo cell. Contrast yellow, even if it's the only contrast paint you'll ever own, get yourself a bottle of contrast yellow. It is just the best. So easy to work with. Alright. Let 
on the last bit for the gun. We need to add some Militarm green. Well, actually, last bit until we do the grip. Grip, we're gonna go with a dark, dark brown, almost reddish brown. So we're using the gold grunt of fur. And that'll be for both the hand grip and the foregrip. Because you want to stay open. <laughs> so just really the foregrip on this one. As they're doing a bottom hold on the pistol grip. This guy's one handing it though, so he gets both. Final bit of detail will be the lenses. For that, I go with a nice Talisar blue, nice and bright. Just a dab on each will do. I'm not trying to take it all the way to the edges. Nice three up tabletop standard. Who mm -hmm. see who picked out the, the nice details on the strapping? The face, thanks to the contrast settling, looks nice and detailed. The gun has a nice amount of work on it. That yellow makes it pop. Mm -hmm. And then we'll finish up the base in my standard and be all done. Next up, I'm going to work on the bases a little bit. Um, I have kind of a standard palette scheme I use for my basing for Fallout. So for dirt and whatnot, I'm using Tau Light Ochre. As this is a GW paint, I've also thinned it out in my palette. Uh, I tend to find that GW paints are especially thick and need fair amount of watering down. Generally almost as much as a 50-50. So we're just kind of dealing with this rubble here. And then around it's going to be more stonework as it's going into the actual pavement. And then we're just covering this boot section with all of its rubble. I said it's just supposed to be some dirt clods, that sort of thing. So we want to go right up to the boot there. And apparently there's a can as part of that, so we'll 
hit that with a bit of coloring as well. This one is mostly dirt. Both do have some nice individual pieces. So this has got this stop sign. And a uh, Nuka-Cola bottle. A lot of these bases have caps on them as well. The other one has those, so we'll hit those with a little red. Just give it a bit of color to stand out. You don't have to go super detailed, but the bases provide a very nice canvas. Lots of unique parts to pick up on. With how much just general dirt this thing has, I'll be using a couple tufts as well. I find that the brownish tufts you can get from various providers work super well with Fallout Minis. Yeah, so just spread this around and we'll come back and hit this stop sign. We'll also be going, finalizing it with a nice Agrax Earthshade wash. Give it that wasteland feel. Okay, back on this one. Draw up to the edge on that. actually make all of this dirt with the exception of these stones. I think that looks better. And again, since I'm working from the lowest point to upper, I'm not overly concerned with painting over these various pieces of rock because I'll just touch them up. You can see there's a bottle cap, there's a bottle cap, there's a bottle cap I'll need to touch up, so they're kind of all over the place. Alright. Now for the pavement itself, we're going with a dark gray. So I'm using Army Painter Necromancer Cloak. Feel free to use whichever shading you want. This is just an example. Again, watering it a little bit, not as much as the GW. see this one flows a lot with even just a little bit of water added to it. So we may have to do a second coat. This edge here. Part of this reason it's pulling away is because this is that primer that we use for contrast paints, so it tends to have a slick surface to it. I'm 
And don't be afraid to make mistakes, because once we apply the wash, it'll cover up all sorts of issues. <laughs> so we're just painting right up to that curb, which we're going to do in a light gray, just to give us some differentiation. Okay. And then, as I said, we'll do a light gray, so more army painter. These came back for me, with me from uh, Ireland, actually. To hung out with the Beast of War team, that was fun. I tend not to be a stickler for one paint brand over another. Mostly I just buy whatever's on hand. All I really care about is it fits the shade that I want. The exception, of course, being the contrast point paints. Currently, um, I'm only getting GW ones. There are a couple new brands of it that have come out from various providers. But considering how good GW has always been with high pigment, I think theirs probably has the advantage there. Alright, so just that little curb, you can see, gives it a nice cutoff piece. So I'm going to let that dry a bit before picking out any. I suppose we should go ahead and. Yeah, the yellow's dried enough. Uh, so we're going to do dark with these stoneworks here. So we're just trying to pick those out. We may even hit them with a bit of light gray dry brush at the end. Alright. And I don't think we have any such on here. Yeah, no, we got a lot of stones on this one. So what we're going to do is hit these real quick. And again, we're just trying to touch the tops of them. Because once we apply that brown wash at the end, it'll help blend everything together. So, for the stop sign, since it is beaten up, we'll first apply a metallic. Uh, for this, I'm using a gunmetal. It's kind of my default go to metallic color. And as we can see, about out of it. Very small. Out of water. Too much paint on the brush for mixing, so just gonna rinse that off real quick. Much better. You don't want to overload your brush. I'll lose a lot of control that way. Mm 
Again, we're just trying to hit the highlights on this. We'll be applying that brown wash so it'll add any rust effects that we want to see. And then we're going to do the entire stop sign in metal first. And then we will dry brush our colors over that. Letting the metal show through to give it a chipped effect. So we'll need to wait for this to dry first before doing that. For the Nuka-Cola bottles, I usually just pretend that they're empty, so all I'm going to do is hit them with some contrast white, just so that they're shaded a bit. And that will be my glass effect. I need to pick up that rock on this one as well. super large amount because we don't want it running all over the place. Alright, and now for the bottle caps we're going to use a dark red old Macandrite Red from Citadel. I tend to use that for a lot of things. This one's been brought back from being solid a couple times, so I don't have to water it down. It's fairly watery already. Just hitting these bottle caps so that they pop a little. Gives it a little color there. Okay. Now I need to real quick do that one rock I missed before my gray dries out and maybe do a little touch up on some of the rocks as well because there we go that's the thing if you think you got your paint too watery other than adding more paint to it because you probably started out with more than enough paint than you need anyway. Just give it a couple minutes. Water will evaporate. And it will go back to a consistency you can work with. Okay. Now, for the manhole cover, we're going to do kind of a dark brass commonly known as tin, tin bits, anything like that. I 
And this is because, ooh, it's way too much paint there. That's what you get when the squeeze bottle gets a little sealed up, though. Uh, once the brown wash goes over, it'll blend it in, and I think it looks pretty nice. And obviously I'm not bothering watering this because I got way too much out, so it's going on pretty thick. Make sure we're getting down into those gaps. Our next piece, we're just going to dry brush the sign and then wash the bases and we're done. So, sticking with this same shade of red first. And we're just trying to it in there. We're not too worried about getting it on the raised sections because we'll go back over those with white. So let's just start dabbing it on here. There we go. has to dry. Then we can apply the white. As with most things, I tend not to use a pure white. I tend to go with this ivory. I think it looks better. It's a little runny. What we're going to do Just kind of pick these edges out. Especially wherever we see red. We don't want it perfect. We want that metallic to show through in a couple spots. And then we'll just pick out the number, the lettering here. There we go. Then for our wash, use a little Agrax Earth, Agrax Earth Shade. I've been using this gloss just to get it out of the way once I seal it and apply my dull coat. It'll get rid of any of the glossy sheen. And we're just liberally applying it to the, our base. 
And as a kitten climbs up in my lap. <laughs> over that nuka there. There we go. Once this dries, we'll be all set. This one especially needs the a lot of wash. You'll see it picks out all of these cracks. Really looks good on top of that. Cow ochre. And a kitten just knocked off my laptop, so. And took off running. <laughs> like any child scared to face what it did. dry, I'll edge them in a dark gray, and then seal them and apply some tufts. Okay, so we're all done with sealing. You can see now that wash really picked up all those details, and our sealant has taken the shine. Then I have a couple more that I've done with a slightly different coloration. I went with a gray here. So this is Knight Captain Cade. He's the medical officer of the Pridwin. And then this is a member of the Order of the Shield who in the game are the mechanics that kind of follow behind the power armor. So I wanted a little different color scheme for him as well. You can see he's got his little yellow beard. Came out quite nice. So pretty happy with those. So after the sealing, the last step that I like to do is attach some of these tufts. So all we're doing is using a little white PVA glue. And I'm going to start with this one. Since it has the most open dirt, I'm actually going to put a couple on there. So I use tweezers to pull them off. All these tend to come on these sheets. And then just pop it wherever there's a nice blank spot. And it just adds a little extra to the base. And with so much open space, I want to have a couple on this one. So go ahead and put that one over there. We don't want to obscure details, we want to enhance what's already there. So usually what I look for when placing these is dirt, so whatever I've painted yellow, or if there's a particular crack or something like that. So with this what I'm going to do is pop this right here and see it's kind of blending from the dirt to the edging there of the crate, so I think that looks pretty good. I'll put a larger one in this other guy. And I'm just going to put this on top of the dirt here. So we're not obscuring the bottle cap that's there on the side, but it does kind of tie that together nicely, I think. So these kind of burnt slash wasteland tufts tend to be the best I find. Now on this one, there's this little patch of dirt at kind of intersection of tile, and I think that's a perfect spot to kind of put that, and there we go. So again, tufts are just a nice, simple way of pulling your model together.
Next up, I'll be doing uh, some of the power armor stuff, so stay tuned for that video.